Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where I absolutely love bringing you insights and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection someday. So, are you in the mood to gain power? Well, if so, you'll be glad to hear that the king is dead. The King is Dead is a game about political upheaval in medieval Britain and the following power struggles between the eight regions to create a new monarch. To win, you'll want to have the majority of a faction on your side. And for them to have claimed the most regions. On your turn, you'll play cards from your hand to manipulate cubes on the board. And each time you do, you must also remove a cube to your side. When players pass, zones score in a set order. With ties resulting in a French victory, and three of these ending the game early. Who will come out on top? Thing 1. What's this game all about? Well, The King is Dead has a pretty simple premise. It's a divided country in which you're trying to vie for loyalty of the various regions by engaging with a series of factions. Um, so technically, I guess this is a game about political upheaval in medieval Britain, um, but don't let that put you off because um, it doesn't necessarily feel like that. Or more importantly, I think the theme is not so strong that it overshadows kind of the gameplay mechanics. And it definitely feels more of an abstract game than a thematic one. But be that as it may, I have to admit that the game is kind of immersive sometimes. I think we had a lot of fun fighting over who got to control various regions of the map and making sure Scotland always remained free. Um, so I really like how this game puts mechanics and theme together that neither overshadows the other, but they complement each other really nicely. Now, similar games to The King is Dead. Um, I'm gonna go with a bit of a stretch on this one and suggest something like Shogun, um, which is a game in which you have a variety of cubes to represent your control of areas of the map and you fight for power via these cubes. Um, now, of course, the fun part here is The King is Dead is a much smaller game and definitely one you could play with lower player counts. Um, so yeah, it stands out a bit, but I got that kind of vibe. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? The King is Dead is definitely an area control cube pushing type of game. So you're going to be moving these little cubes around the map and you do this using a handful of cards. Um, now, the first thing you got to point out is that you don't own any of the factions on the map to begin with. Um, so they're all free and easy to be influenced by you so that you can gain power with them. Um, the fun part here is how you win. And this is that you need to have the majority of a particular faction or color, um, but they also have to have won the most zones out on the map. So you're kind of trying to manipulate a way to get as many of a particular color to yourself as possible, while also having them claim as many regions out on the board. Um, the problem with this is that every time you move, perform an action or play a card, which allows you to manipulate all these things, um, you have to take a colored cube from the board. Um, so on the one hand, it means you can gather cubes of a particular color that you think are doing successfully. Um, however, it also means that you have less influence on the board to play with in the first place. Um, so it's this terrible dilemma of, you know, I, I want to see them succeed, but then I would lose the cubes. It's, it's tough stuff. Um, and not only that, but the handful of cards you have is just that and they are set um, and once you run out of cards you're out of cards and everybody has the same ones at least in the basic mode um, and those cards are so important because they really do like it's the crux of the game how you're moving things around but then because they are limited you have to really decide when and how you want to use them and be very efficient with them too um, because if you don't use your cards, you can pass. And once two people have passed, you'll score a region. And this means whichever colored cube has the majority there will claim that zone. Um, watch out for ties because that can happen because that basically implies that the French have somehow won. And if three French ties happen, the game ends prematurely. So, whew. although it can be fun to tie his own just to deny someone else the points. Um, but that's really a lot of what this game is about, actually. Kind of, you know, being mean to each other enough to help you further your goals. Um, yeah, this one is pretty, pretty, pretty mechanically sound. Thing three on the table. 
This game is really lovely when it's set up. It's bright, colourful and compact as well. It's definitely very inviting. And because it's so small and takes up very little table space, it's quick to set up and quick to put away too. Um, it takes about 25 minutes for two of us to play, so it's nice and quick. Um, and the rule book here is exceptional. It was short, it was to the point, and it answered all of the questions. So good job, rule book. Now, replayability wise, I think most of it comes from, you know, you're interacting with another player pretty much directly. Um, so that's where you get all that excitement. However, there is also like advanced cards you can play with if you really wanted to spice it up beyond the base game. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Um, for me, it's the cover art that actually drew me to this in the first place. I love that medieval vibe. And this one looks really fun and interesting just because it's so bright and colourful. Um, it really looks like an illuminated manuscript. And this art style is carried through into the cards and into the actual game board itself. It's just, it's bright and happy without being garish. I just, I think it's it's really well done. Um, component quality wise, yeah, everything here is lovely. There's not actually that many components, but the game board itself is beautiful um, when set up. I love the choice of colors. Um, the cards themselves are nice, but they also have like a little gold sheen on them just to, you know, pump it up a little bit. Um, and I've no idea why this game is in a larger box as it is. Um, that's a bit perplexing because you open the box and there's just a square where the deck of cards sit and the, the game board. Um, so yeah, that seems a little over the top. But otherwise, this game is um, really, really fun. It's kind of like opening a present aesthetically. Thing five, is this game actually any good? So I'm not a big fan of area control games, let alone ones that are 1v1. Um, I just find that I don't have the ability to plan ahead like my opponents do. And it's not really fun for anybody to be flogging a dead horse. So I don't normally play these kind of games. So when I tell you that the king is dead is particularly special, you'll know exactly where I'm coming from. And it starts with this hand of cards that you get. Um, everyone gets the same one. And already it's feeling a little bit like Onitama, which is a game where all of the moves are already laid out and you know each other's moves. And I get that feeling here um, because when you sit down to play, you don't have to decide, oh, exactly what I'm going to do now and plan five turns in advance. But your cards help you decide what kind of actions you might like to consider and also what kinds of things your opponents are able to do as well. And I found that it gave me a bit of a Lego and, you know, it leveled the playing field a little bit so that, you know, me and my opponent could actually legitimately compete. Now, great thinkers out there don't panic either because cards aren't everything. They're definitely like a foothold into greatness. Um, but I think the most important part of this game is deciding when to score these different zones. And that's something you don't do with cards. Um, and that's really to do with timing um, and something that you want to plan ahead for. So for sure, getting the cubes into the right zones matters, but also knowing when to score them. And um, that way, I think you get a little bit of both worlds where, you know, the uninitiated get a little help, but those advanced players have ways of manipulating things too. Um, I think the game is really great like that. Um, the most genius thing about it is the fact that when you play an action, you have to remove a cube. Um, and I know it sounds really basic, but gosh darn it, it's so clever. Um, and this is simply because you get to move the cubes around the board, but then you have to take one away, and meaning you've less to play with the next time you want to move the cubes. Um, and I just thought it was so, so clever. Um, and it's one that, you know, really kind of adds tension to the game and a really big sense of progression as well, as that the number of cubes diminish as the game transpires. Um, overall, I had a lot of fun with this game. Um, it's very clever, it's very well put together, and it plays very, very smoothly. And for something that I shouldn't really have been overly interested in, colour me impressed. Do I think you should have The King is Dead in your collection? Well, if you're looking for a quick and intelligent area control game that looks beautiful on the table, then this is one you should be checking out. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos. It genuinely helps me out too. And if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about The King is Dead, shout them off in the comment box below. And until next time, tune in again for some more short and informative board game reviews.